If you enjoy the channel and our video content and would like to support us, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can sign up to our Patreon site which is a monthly subscription to one of our four tiers, each giving you something different from early access interviews up to exclusive unseen footage. There's also the option of a one-off donation via PayPal which allows you the option to donate an amount of your choice. Both options really help to keep this channel going and to continue putting out regular content for you good folk. So please take a look at aircurrentreview.tv forward slash donate and I thank you in advance. Thank you and enjoy. So how did the aircraft handle and can you share some of the strengths and weaknesses of the Hornet? Yeah, so um, if we go strengths, um, everything it did. And, and I, I, I don't say that as, uh, you know, because I flew the Hornet, it's obviously the best aeroplane in the world. Bear in mind there was no F-22 or F-35 in these days. The Hornet did things that other aeroplanes couldn't do. It was unlimited in angle of attack. Uh, the engines were carefree handling, so it didn't matter what altitude you were at, you could just slam them up to full burner, slam them back to idle and they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't complain. Um, and it, it was the first, I think they called it like a soft wing aeroplane, where you put an input in, all sorts of stuff will move on the aeroplane. Normally if you go left, the ailerons will move, the one on the mm left will go up and the one on the right will go down if I remember my aerodynamics. In the Hornet you want to go left, you go left, it'll decide which surface it's going to move uh, and that includes quite a bit of the uh, quite a bit of the rudder. The rudder's uh, very important in the flying solution. So um, I, I, I use the phrase all the time, I could turn myself inside out with that uh, with that aeroplane. Um, I, know, I know we all do uh, hands as pilots. <laughs> if I'm um, I was on one particular trip and I'd flush somebody out in front of me. Now, if I want to shoot him, normally in any other aeroplane, I'd have to overbank and pull down uh, like that. In the Hornet, you don't do that. I, I was in this position once and I just thought, well, he's down there. And I shoved the stick front right in the cockpit and the aeroplane just went like that. And it was, uh, I mean, I just thought I'd died and gone to heaven. I absolutely <laughs> did. Now, no other aeroplane did that at the, at the time. So handling wise, that, uh, that was why it was different from everything else. Mm. Strengths, it was the best dogfighting aeroplane in the world. I don't care what anybody else says, it absolutely was. We could be anybody in that aeroplane if you did the right, uh, the right tactics. Um, it could carry anything. Um, and the F-18D in particular did uh, forward air control airborne, so we'd have a FAC in the, oh, in the right. back, right. Uh, bringing other aeroplanes in to, uh, to attack. We could attack those targets ourselves, we could mark them with, uh, uh, with flares. We could call in uh, naval gunfire uh, from off the coast. It did absolutely everything. Um, uh, carried harms, so it would uh, shoot uh, SAM sites as, uh, as well. So uh, b brilliant, absolutely brilliant aeroplane. You can, you can tell I'm a fan, can't you? Yeah, you can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, then it's been a multi-role aircraft. Yeah. Did it do one job better than the other, would you say? Um, I, I can't put my finger on it. I, to tell you the truth, I, um, I learned quite a lot about um, ground attack on that aeroplane. I was fortunate, very fortunate in that there was a, um, a British backseater from the Tornado GR1 on uh, exchange mm. with me, Gav, and he was, he was a brilliant guy. And uh, he taught me quite a lot about uh, ground attack while I was learning, uh, learning on the job. Um, I think it was a great ground attack uh, aeroplane. I think it was very accurate uh, with, uh, with what it dropped without laser. Once it carried um, uh, uh, laser guided uh, munitions as well, it was even more accurate. Mm. So uh, I don't think there was anything you could fault it. It maybe couldn't carry, well, it certainly couldn't carry as much as an F 15S, uh, uh, sorry, F 15E. Um, uh, couldn't carry as much as a B1B, of course, and a B52, <laughs> but for um, for it was the best close air support aeroplane um, that the Americans had as well, uh, as far as carrying stuff. For uh, it was much better than the Harrier. It was probably um, up to speed with the A10 because that was really cooling close uh, close air support as well. Airborne, um, uh, sorry, upper air uh, type stuff, um, fighter pilot stuff. Um, 
why wouldn't you want to be in it? It carried Amram, it carried the latest uh, edition of M9 Sidewinder, uh, it could outturn an F-15, we could beat an F-16, although that was a hard, uh, hard fought um, uh, fight, but yeah, it, it, I, I can't think of a weakness uh, for it. Apart from, it was a bit light on top end speed. So if you wanted to run away from a fight, um, it took quite a bit to get to 1.2 running away. Other aeroplanes, F-16, had, had easily overhaul something like that. Would you have to be clean if you were going to try and get through the MAC? Uh, no, you could uh, pilots. We never flew the thing completely clean, so you'd have uh, pylons. We generally flew with the centerline uh, mm -hmm. tank, um, and it would uh, it would go through the MAC uh, quite happily uh, uh, there. It's just it's it's really high top end speed wasn't wasn't that that great. So yeah, you were talking about the best dogfighter in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So did you uh, manage to do a lot of DACT? I'm, I'm guessing you went up against everything in America. That uh, we did. And, um, you know, most of my life, I, I think, or the majority of the, the trips that I did uh, were DACT. And um, we, we took on everybody. Uh, what, was, uh, what was interesting was when I was on the um, reserve unit, we flew brown hornets. So they were camouflaged oh, yes. brown. Yeah. Um, so everybody thought we were an aggressor squadron, but we weren't. But everybody wanted to fight against us over the desert because of Iraq and Afghanistan and, and such like that. And, um, and we were difficult to see in that, uh, in that desert, uh, desert camp. But the bottom line is when we got into just pure... Uh, combat has a, a whole range of things. You know, we're normally flying 4v4s, 8v8s, uh, 2v2s and stuff. When it gets to the proper hand-to-hand -hand type stuff of 1v1, um, there was nothing that could touch that uh, that aeroplane. Hardest fight that we had was uh, probably the F-16 because it had an end. The F-16 weighs about 16 grams <laughs> and has an engine that's as strong as a uh, powerful as a nuclear reactor. So they they would try and outrate us, and they could pull 9G as well. Yeah. We were limited to seven and a half. Um, but um, if we if we were able to get the fight slow. Nobody but nobody could fly as slow as a Hornet. I've flown a Hornet at 80 knots in air combat. Uh, really? Flushed somebody out the front and just pointed the nose at them and gunned them. That knots. was an F-16 guy. Yeah, unbelievable. Crikey. Absolutely unbelievable. Right on the edge of, uh, of the stall. An F-16 would be falling out of the sky at 120 or 110, somewhere around there. So we'd always, um, <clears throat> I would always take those guys slow if I could, try and flush them out of the front and, uh, and do it like that.